Welcome to week nine. This week's topic is professional behavior in image. This is what I call the icing on the cake piece. In other words, if you think about that you have great skills and so does someone else, you have a great attitude and so does another administrative assistant, um, you both are team players, you both have in the, been in the field for a really long time, what sets you apart? It's your professional image, it's your behavior, how you present yourself, your actions, and your speech. Interestingly, this ended up being the largest chapter in Become an Inner Circle Assistant. Did I plan it that way? No, I didn't. When I was getting ready to write this book, I had accumulated all the information and all the, the programs that I had been teaching administrative professionals for years. And I started laying out all these different um, competency areas and topic areas like teamwork and attitude and so forth. And all of a sudden, this one area was just growing and growing. And all these different topics in this particular category ended up being those that related to professional image and behavior. Again, this just demonstrates the importance of how we act, how we present ourselves. And if you're going to achieve administrative excellence, this is going to be integral to your success. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, I have a couple key points I'd like to share with you. First of all, the way you look, the way you speak, the way you act, the way you present yourself is either going to detract from your perceived credibility or it's really going to enhance your perceived credibility. Now let's look at those two words. Perceived means how others see you, what they think about you, the impressions they form of you. Now those perceptions may not be right, but you know what? It's their reality. What I perceive is what I believe. I looked up the word credibility. It's defined as the ability to inspire belief or trust. It's believability, reliability, authority, and sincerity. People want to do business with people they perceive to be credible. So if you want to be taken seriously, you have to be perceived as being credible. To be perceived as being credible that is going to come from how you act, how you present yourself, and so forth. Why should you care? I mean, I gave you one reason, and so people will take you more seriously, but I'd like to point out some other reasons why it's important to reflect a professional image. First and foremost, you are a representative of your organization. People form impressions of your organization on how you treat them and how you act and how you welcome them. And you can be a wonderful role model representing your organization. If you think about, in, my, in the book here I refer to, while your company may embrace casual dress, there actually are six levels of casual dress. So what level does your business want you to follow? Six levels, can you imagine that, of casual dress? It ranges from sporty to business casual. Another reason why you should care about your professional image is because you are your own calling card. According to Susan Bixler, author of The New Professional Image, it only takes 30 seconds for people to form numerous impressions about you, such as your education, level, career competence, personality, level of sophistication, trustworthiness, skill, talent, and social heritage. She also talks about the halo effect and what that is is that people form quick impressions of us and if they assume that you're very neat and organized and professional and um, very alert and focused, they assume that you're like that in other aspects of your life. If people come in and your work area is a mess and you've got things all over the place and you appear very distracted and if they see you as a very disorganized person then they assume that you're disorganized about everything else in your life you know you're disorganized as to how you handle your tasks your projects you must be disorganized about how you handle meetings so the halo effect is really important another reason 
This is the most important, I believe, especially for administrative professionals, is people take you more seriously. You know, the administrative profession has come a long way since 1970 when I started. And we still have a long way to go. We need to be taken seriously in this profession. And unfortunately, casual dress is working against us in the administrative profession. You know, we're still fighting this battle. And what we need to do is be taken more seriously, all of us, everyone in the profession, so that management views this as a true career, a career of choice, a career that have, should have succession planning even in it. So it's going to stem from you, each and every one of you, how you perceive yourself in your role. Um, another, this is a really good reason, is that you inspire others. Do you believe that? But when you look your best, when you act your best, when you present yourself well, when you walk around and you have a good attitude, you inspire other people to do their best. You inspire people to step up to the plate. I'll never forget two incidences in my administrative career that are just coming to my mind right now. One is um, way back. I was working in Asheville. We were living in Asheville, North Carolina, and I was working for a small very small computer company. I was an office manager. Now, this was later in my career, and all I had been used to getting more dressed up. I worked in a big city where I lived in Cleveland, Ohio, most of my early career. And of course, at that time, too, we didn't have all the casual dress rules. So I was used to dressing more business-like for work, and I always kind of saw myself that way as a real business person. So when I went to work at this company, um, this very small technology company, is I noticed a lot of the women there were wearing blue jeans and just a top or a blouse or whatever. And it was a more casual environment. Well, being the office manager and because I perceived myself as a businesswoman, I would wear skirts, um, maybe with a nice sweater or a top, or I would wear nice pantsuits. Um, a lot of times I wore the skirts, though. Do you know what happened within six months of my being there and demonstrating professionalism? Do you know what the others started doing? Guess what? They upped their game. They started dressing nicer. They started dressing more professional. And you know what happened? Then they were starting to be taken more seriously. So that's really important to, to think about how you can inspire others. The other incident was really a very pleasant surprise for me. I was working in North Carolina. We moved around a lot with my husband's career for a while, and I was actually working for a large corporation. It was a division of Steelcase, and uh, we had about 900 employees, and we had a lot of visitors come to that facility because these were our potential clients or current clients who invested a lot of money in office furniture. And I'll never forget, I can even picture it to this day, we had a visitor come in and I was sitting at my desk and I reported to the general manager and just doing my work and dress professionally. And he came up to my desk and he said, you know what? He said, just looking at you and how professional you look and how neat you are, he says, you make me feel good today. Now, what, isn't that a great compliment? So you can't even begin to anticipate how you can inspire others by being your professional best. Don't fall into, well, everybody else does this, so I need to do this. Um, that, that's one rule that I have had since I was 19 years old. And it takes courage to do what fits in line with your career goals, not what everybody else is wearing today. Now, um, a couple other points. I'd like to share with you the rule of 12. I bet you're not familiar with this. This is something I learned several years ago, and I can't uh, tell you really who originated it. It's one of those things that gets passed around. But the rule of 12 says that people start to form impressions of you 12 feet away. So as you're walking down a hall, or you're walking into a building for the first time, or maybe you're going to a meeting or a conference, or even if you and I were walking down a hall coming toward each other, at 12 feet away, people are already forming impressions as to how smart they think we are, uh, what level of education we have, even how much money we have or we don't have, if we look intelligent or they're not intelligent. Then, 
as we get closer to each other, we focus on the top 12 inches. Because just imagine, you're here, now you're moving in. Of course you focus on this part. Then it's the first 12 words that you say that people will determine, I want to get to know you more, or oh my gosh, get me away as fast as I can. 12-12 rule. Now what does that mean? Really what this ultimately leaves, leads to is what I call congruency. If you remember nothing else of what I tell you today, write the word congruency down. What that means is our outer and in, inner image, what we say has to be congruent with our outer. A person could have on a $2,000 outfit and you know look fabulous, you might say, and then they start speaking and they're just babbling on and on. See, that's not congruency. Also, someone could have on a $150 outfit and still look very put together because it's not about money and look great and then again they open their mouth and they don't sound like they have their thoughts together. Then I know some people who don't look put together, you might say, on their outer image and then they start speaking and they're very eloquent. So do you see the idea is you want to have your outer professional image and then you want to match that with your actions in your speech, especially. Um, as I said, congruency, we talked about that. Another point I would like to make is that we live and breathe the perception factor in the United States of America. And I'm, I'm sorry to say that in terms of often when I teach my workshops on this topic, I will often hear administrative assistants say to me, but Joan, you're telling me I have to dress a certain way and I have to be a certain way and why can't people just accept me for who I am? I should be able to dress however I want. It's about my brains. But do you see, unfortunately in our country, that's what we seem to care about. You know, maybe in other countries it's not the same way. Here we seem to be all about this perception and image and so forth. So it doesn't mean not being true to yourself. It just means how do you be true to yourself in a professional way in the workplace? And then when you're outside of work, where would you like? Where would you want? Um, professionalism I want to share with you includes from my definition, it's dress, appearance, attitude, behaviors, it's harmony. It is self-confidence, speech, body language, and so much more. I don't want you to think it's just about dress and the, the outside material things. Your professionalism is everything about you. All right, let's get to the activity for week nine. I have three activities for you this week. You can do one of them or do all three. Be objective about yourself and do an analysis from head to toe. What works well for you? What brings out your best features? What colors look good on you? For example, I look washed out in pastels. I really do. So bold colors work well for me. Another thing that you could take a look at is just what style looks good on you. What fits your body? What works well? And then what isn't working so well for you? The idea is you want to enhance your, your natural appearance and look that you have been given. Second, now I want you to broaden your vision. Okay, first we looked at you. Now I really want you to broaden it to what do you surround yourself with? What do you carry? What kind of tote bag do you carry to work? Do you have the plastic supermarket bag that you love to fill everything in? So now imagine here we have an administrative professional dressed sharp, maybe even very casual, but sharp. And now she's carrying a plastic bag from the supermarket. You know, that's a part of you. That's a part of who you are, believe it or not. What kind of notepad do you use in meetings? And those of you who are still using the good old stenographer pad from the 70s, get rid of it, okay? Because it reeks of the 70s. That's the secretary of yesteryear. Today's administrative professional, remember, is a business person. And so as a business person, what do you use to take your notes on? And I'm going to share with you a couple things that I really love and I use. There is one product line that I am absolutely in love with. The other aspect is your pen. You know, as you go sit in a meeting with other managers 
or maybe a group of administrative peers and you're leading that group, do you have a 49 cent pen with you? So like I said, first step is you. Then you have to broaden it to what do you carry? What tools do you use around you? And the third part is thinking about taking your vision even farther. What does my office look like? What does my work area look like? Does it say, I'm here to do business? Or you know what, I sure wish I was at home today and I've got my stuffed animals all around me and I've got pictures all over the place. And I'm not saying don't have pictures. I have photos. I love family photos. I do have several throughout my office. It's just that they're in a nice frame. And you know what, it doesn't have to be expensive. I don't want you to think I'm saying go spend a lot of money. I want to share with you a, a product line that I absolutely love. I absolutely adore Levenger products. Um, and in fact, I'll show you the catalog. I have been using Levenger for years, and it's fabulous. You know, for women today, we don't have to carry those briefcases, those black heavy things like men carry. As women, we want to, we want to stand out. We want to bring our femininity into our work. So they've got all kinds of wonderful things. I know a lot of assistants love color. They come to my classes and they love it because you can have pastels. Levenger is a quality product. Some of the things that I love, and I even have these for my assistant, Jasmine. This is my favorite. Um, I love this little pad because, well, one thing is I don't always want to carry a big pad. I also have the big pad, too, from Levenger. It comes in great colors. I also love the fact that you can lift this up, and all you need are a few sheets of paper. So this is great. You know, when I'm going off to a meeting and I don't want to carry a bigger pad, and then there's times when, again, I need my bigger pad. We're going to do a lot of creative writing and brainstorming, and so I need this. This I love for traveling. When I travel all around the country and I'm going on site to work with my clients and executives and assistants, this is great. It fits perfect in my briefcase. Um, another example of a product that I love and Jasmine and I use, this is fabulous for those of you who are working on a project that involves a lot of pieces. And you have to, sh excuse me one moment, let me put this back in here. But is this not the greatest thing? Look at this. You have tabs where you can put different information that pertains to different parts of your project. In other words, when I was developing my Star Manager series and getting everything ready, this is what I used to put all my notes in, to put information in. I had the pad. And then the great news was it's all in one place, and I can just tuck it away. So I'm, like I said, I'm a big fan of Levenger. I also believe that as an administrative professional, there are times that you have to invest a little bit more money. And this isn't real expensive, so, but you have to invest a little more to really carry through your professional image. And the other part of that is that seeing your, your career as an investment. You know, when I was an assistant, I always saw the, the clothes that I bought, the tools that I used to do my job as an investment in my career. So that's what you're doing. And actually, we have had participants who have come to my World Class Assistant Program. They learned about this. They went back to their offices. They got rid of their little tacky notepads, and they started investing in having something nicer for themselves. And I have gotten email after email telling me the difference that they have experienced just in how people have looked at them, how people have talked to them, and even how they felt. They really felt professional. So that's it for today. I could probably spend more time on this because I have several items that I really like, but this is my favorite in terms of expanding your professional wardrobe. <laughs>